Sorry, I got to find my agenda. Uh, all other persons are present except for Mr. Zacker, who is excused, and Mr. Austin is present online. Our item is third item is public hearing on the 2023 City of Wisconsin Rapids proposed budget. What I'll do is I'll have Tim when he's ready to kind of introduce the budget. Uh, and then once that happens, we will hold a public hearing and continue on. Whenever you're good, ready, Tim. Thank you. Apologize, just providing some more copies of the budget. Um, I guess I'll reference the uh, 2023 budget highlights, which is just kind of an overall summary of some of the main uh, points of the budget. On page one, just kind of goes through, and you've seen this before, our municipal levy limit calculation which shows exactly what we're allowed to raise our levy by. And basically the two components that affect the city of Wisconsin Rapids are net new construction adjustment, which is 84,000. And then we're allowed in an adjustment for increase in debt service of 143,000. So our allowable levy is $13,750,751. And kind of below that, you see the net new construction over the years which uh, enumerates past years, but also shows how the 84,000 was calculated. On page two is our property tax levy. And basically I'm just showing like throughout the various funds, our, our, our budget is comprised of various uh, different fund accounts that account for different activities. And this kind of just shows the, the property tax levy that supports each fund and the kind of the the change in that, you'll notice one difference in the property tax levy from the general fund, uh, decreasing 888,000, and the EMS fund increasing 968,000. And the reason for that is because we changed the allocation between what we allocate uh, for expenses between fire and EMS. Uh, in the previous year's budget, it was 72% fire, 28% EMS, and now we're at a 50-50 level, which we feel reflects more accurately kind of the you know what the the service level is there so that's that's the reason why you see that drastic change between the general fund because the fire uh, services are accounted for in the general fund and EMS is accounted for in the EMS fund um, then you'll see the estimated 2022 tax rate uh, for 2022 the operating tax rate is eleven dollars and twenty five dollars or twenty five cents uh, the debt service tax rate is two dollars and five cents for a overall tax rate of $13.31, which is about a 2.9% increase in the tax rate. Um, uh, in the, and obviously below that, you'll see the tax levy rate or the tax rate history showing it over the years. Um, if you flip it over, I kind of show the effect of what this has on a $108,000 residential property. And so based on the, the tax rate, a 2.9% increase, it's about $40.67 per or for that $108,000 that the city uh, taxes would increase. Um, below that, general fund state aids, I just kind of like to show this over the years of kind of where our state aids, which is a major funding component for the city. And as you see, actually this year, we came out pr fairly well compared to previous years. We had about $110,000 increase. Uh, we saw an increase in our transportation aids and our expenditure restraint program, which accounted for that $110,000 increase. Uh, page four is just kind of just showing, you know, of our budget, you know, kind of what our revenue sources are and what, you know, what makes up those, you know, what percentage of that makes it up. As you can see, property taxes are about 38% of our budgeted revenues and intergovernmental state aids, I was just uh, reflecting on earlier, is about 20.6%. And I just kind of like to show you exactly where all the funding sources for, you know, obviously the, the city's budget comes from and as you can see when you look at property taxes 38.2 percent intergovernmental 20.6 and those revenues I mean obviously this year we we saw an increase in intergovernmental revenues but typically over the past uh, decade or so they've been fairly flat but as you can see you know, between those two and the levy limits that in it which is tied to net new construction is that you know those two revenue sources which aren't very progressive in nature you know make up a large portion of our budget which you know can 
proposed challenges from one year to the next. Uh, on the next page, page five, is just showing where, you know, where we spend our money, expenditure category. And these are just broad <coughs> expenditure categories and where, where we spend it and just showing, you know, kind of between general government, public safety, public works, and all the other categories of where we're at as far as, you know, where we spend our dollars. Okay, on page six, we get into, you know, in the 2023 proposed budget, there is a geo promissory note to fund street construction of 1635000 I'm just showing you, and of that, for that, that's a, a funding the Apricot Street, Shoreridge, Harris, Oak Street, uh, street construction projects, and with the debt issuance cost of 65, which comprises that 1635000 um, geo debt outstanding as of the end of this year is $28,235,000. million uh, we are scheduled to pay down in principle of two million five hundred ninety five thousand with the issuance of the proposed uh, geo note of one million six hundred thirty five or geo debt outstanding as of the end of next year will drop to twenty seven million two hundred seventy five thousand um, as you can see you know the legal debt margin and basically that's a statutory thing where you're not allowed to issue more than 5% of equalized value. Um, this calculation shows at the end of next year that um, the percentage of our debt capacity utilized is at 40.2%. If you uh, turn to the next page to seven, I just kind of want to, I kind of did this to show you over the years we issue debt for a variety of purposes. And basically what this shows is what, what, what that is. As you can see, street construction only represents 31% of our outstanding debt of the 28235000 um, Aquatics facility represents 30%. Um, Water and light, we refinanced some electric revenue bonds. Basically what it is, they took out uh, revenue bonds um, back, uh, I can't remember the year, and we refinanced with geo debt, which saved them a considerable amount of interest, and so, that's accounted for in our geo debt, but it's paid with uh, electric revenues. Um, they reimburse us for the debt service on those, and that represents 14%. And as you can see, the East River Bank project, the fire station rev renovation, which accounts for where we're at. And, and this basically, I'd like to show it like this is where you know all the debt issued over the years. This is where it has been uh, spent. And then just kind of just to give you an idea, and it's just a comparable, but. And when I looked at comparable municipal debt of other municipalities around the area between Rapids, Marshfield, Stevens Point, Wausau, just kind of show it between their geo debt, revenue debt, and the total debt of where Wisconsin Rapids kind of you know, ranks with, within those municipalities. So. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> um, what we can do is open up uh, the, the public hearing then at uh, 6, 11 p.m. And if there's anybody that wishes to speak against the budget, um, please raise your hand and come up to the podium and be recognized. State your name and address and you can speak your, your thoughts for three minutes. Uh, I guess I'll call for a second time. Does anybody wish? Yeah, speak against. Do you wish? Um, so yeah, for the first time, let's call anybody who wants to speak against. Uh, for a second time, does anybody wish to speak against? And for a third time, does anybody wish to speak against? I have a letter that I'm going to read. I'm not sure if he's for or against the budget, but um, yeah, so I'm going to read it anyways at this point. It's from Rick Humphreys and he lives at 460 Chestnut Street. <clears throat> and it says, Dear Mayor Blazer and City Council members, what is more feasible and cost effective? To plan and build a community center or repurpose an existing structure, furnish the building, hire staff, and plan programs and services that everyone hopes will draw the interest of the public or continue to finance organizations that has successfully done so. Some of our city council members have offered a third plan. They want to decimate and drastically reduce funding for the McMillan Library. 
which offers this kind of community without any plans to replace lost services. Is community important to these individuals? The Macmillan Library has evolved over the last two decades to meet community needs and wishes in a unique way. Where else in Wisconsin Rapids is everyone regardless of age or finance is welcome, given opportunities to interact, get technical uh, or other assistance, or quietly do their own thing. When there's a budget shortfall, it needs to be dealt with, but solutions need to be looked at across the board. The library is no less vital to this community than any other department that the city funded. A lot of needs are met for at-risk populations because they can come to the library and have a place to belong. It is unfortunate there is no way to capture statistics on this. If there were, I think the community would be pleasantly surprised. My hope is that all council members will educate themselves about the library offers, and what, what the library offers and what the library means to so many residents. At a recent library meeting, out of town residents weighed in as well and expressed their concern that this decisions city council members make may take away something valuable to them as well. City council members would have greatly benefited from attending this meeting. Please look at other solutions to this budget shortfall, even if it involves adding a library tax to my property taxes. If the city council members continue to target only the library for its budget, so budget solutions, I will offer as much vigorous legal opposition as I can muster. Rick Humphreys. So I, it's not for or against. Um, so let's call for anybody who wishes to speak in favor of the budget. And for, oh, go ahead, Elizabeth. If you could state your name and address, please. Oh, thank you. Um, so my name is Elizabeth Whalen, and I live at 211 15th Avenue North, Wisconsin Rapids in Ward 1. Um, I wrote down my thoughts so that I can kind of stay a little bit organized here. So. Um, but first of all, let me thank you all for, you know, your service to our city. Um, thank you for all the meetings that you attend and, you know, for keeping all of this straight. <laughs> because when I look at some of this, I'm like average Joe and I'm like um, a little bit swimming. I appreciate the extra help from, um, from some of you. So um, I'm a homeowner and a taxpayer in the city going on 20 years. Um, while much has changed uh, for the city in this time, I submit that the city budget has stayed relatively stable. Um, when we purchased our home in 2002, our, our property tax was, oh, I'm gonna take this off for now, was $1,525. That was now 20 years later, our tax is $1,644. That's a difference of $119 over 20 years. Um, I don't, I can't think of very many things that I've purchased that, you know, um, that I have that good of a, you know, return for that long. So for all of our city, county, school, and college services, my family contributes $137 a month, to which our spe city-specific allocation is only $75. While I appreciate that you want to keep the city financially solvent, the city is not a business. It is a un ultimately a collection of people coming together to share in the common wants and needs and to make our lives better. Roads, bridges, schools, parks, fire stations, police services, social services, and libraries. We can't do this alone. We have to band together so that we have better services and better everything. The debt that our city, um, that I've seen that some of our are using as an excuse to cut the library budget has been taken on to support the building of capital projects that ultimately benefits the whole community as shown in that um, great budget highlights. I'm proud to, that I can have my tax dollars give our firefighters safer and more usable fire station. The community has improved park and recreation services. Um, the library has not been a factor in contributing to the city's capital debt, from what I can see. 
Most of the costs for the recent improvements have been all been covered by multiple grants and donations, with the largest coming from the Legacy Foundation. The city, of course, did cover um, the cost of replacing the carpeting, which is greatly you know, appreciated. These grants and donations would most likely not be coming if our, city, if our library was not one of the top libraries in the state. McMillan Memorial has won two Wisconsin Library Association High Smith Awards for innovation. That just doesn't happen out of the blue. Um, best Things Wisconsin named McMillan the best third, the third best library in the state, trailing only the Wisconsin State Historic Society Library and the Milwaukee Public Library. McMillan was also even a finalist for the 2019 National Medal for Museum and Library Services. That's a national medal for our city, for a service in our city. I mean, to me, that's just amazing. Um, Your time's almost up. OK, thank you. Do you um, wrap it up? I'll just, I'll just give the rest to my husband and make him finish. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But th thank you. I, I really I, I do appreciate all the services that the, our city offers. And I, I just want you to realize that um, for me as a taxpayer, I, I feel like I'm getting a bargain. I mean, I think that we do a lot with the money that we have. And I know that there's constraints on the state level on what we can do. But honestly, I'm like, you know, because we come together as a group and the more that we do together and that I feel like I'm like here take my tax dollars and put it with my neighbors and my neighbors and my neighbors because when we do that we just get so much in more improved services so thank you thank you um, does anybody else wish to speak in favor of the budget And I guess for the third and final time, is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Come on up, man. I guess anybody that wants to speak in favor, you can be heard. Um, so please come on up. If you could state your name and address. Um, I'm Signe Jorgensen. I live at 641 Dewey Street here in Wisconsin Rapids. Um, so I was here last week at the meeting when there was a very big discussion about the budget and particularly the library budget. Um, and the first thing I want to say is that it was very clear to me that everybody in this room, you know, back here, up here, was, you know, concerned and doing their best um, to, to seriously consider the budget and what's best for our city. So I want to thank everybody for that. Um, and I also want to thank everybody um, last week for really listening to what people were saying and to listening to public opinion. Um, the fact that this council voted differently than it originally had suggests that you guys really care what we think, so thank you. Um, I guess what I just want to say is that I know we're all trying to do what's in the best interest of the city of Wisconsin Rapids, and what I personally believe is in the best interest of our city um, is to pass the budget as proposed. Um, I know we still have a week before the final vote, um, but I really do encourage everybody to um, vote in favor of maintaining the full funding for the library. Um, as we heard last week, it provides immense value to our community. Um, lots of services, lots of um, options, and certainly lots of hours for people to go and use those services. Um, so as we move forward to next week's vote, I just hope that everybody will, like I said, take into consideration everything that we've heard here so far. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Okay, seeing none at 6.22 p.m., we'll close the public hearing. And we are on to item four, continued discussion regarding the 2023 city budget. Does Common Council have any further discussion or comments? I think we've all pretty much talked about it quite a bit. Nope, seeing nothing. Uh, let me ask Mr. Austin. You have any questions, Mr. Austin? No, I just had some service interruption. I'm good right now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, we are on to the final item of our meeting, which is, if I can find it, is adjournment. What are your wishes? We have a motion. Is there a second? Se we have a second. All in favor say aye. Anybody, aye. anybody opposed? Motion ca that carries. We're adjourned. Goodbye. <laughs>